There we go. All right. And here we are. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Soul Lucian Sunday. Because the soul is the solution to all of our issues. <laughs> So good morning. Today on this beautiful Solution Sunday, we are going to be talking about self-healing. And I have two amazing women as my guests this morning who have each learned how to heal themselves. We have each done it for ourselves in very different ways. There is no right way or wrong way but we are going to share our stories to help inspire you to know that you are the solution that you can heal yourself. So this morning I have as my guest, Marcy Newman, who is the, is an, has an amazing story of her own and Rebecca Smith McGovern. So I will let the two of you introduce yourselves to the audience so that, so that they know exactly who you are. So Marcy, let's start with you. Thanks so much, Lisa. And thank you for inviting me to be here today and to be here with Rebecca, who I love so much. And, um, you know, we've shared some wonderful experiences together and already I can feel the energy that is mounting. And um, it's very exciting to be able to share all of this. So having said that, I'm known as the heart shift coach. And that is um, actually a process that I've created, which is the culmination of my my work as an energy healer um, in energy medicine for over 45 years. So my um, professional career as a healer actually started back in the early 70s when I was in nursing school and also went into an ordination program to become a spiritualist minister. So I was trained in hands-on healing, trained in mediumship and channeling. And so my entire professional career has been as a liaison almost between the conventional world of healing and the metaphysical world. And so of course it's molded my perspective and how I relate to everything. And so as we go forward in our conversation today, I just, I want you to keep that in mind, all right? So. I say that because in truth, every single one of us has, <clears throat> excuse me, been living a life that has brought us to this moment, this moment of being able to turn a page. And I say turn a page because that's what it takes in order for us to become more expansive in our thinking and our perspectives and to shift our beliefs, to let in this new way of being, which, you know, Lisa, you've done such an incredible job with, you know, offering these opportunities for people to start to think differently and more to see themselves differently. So, you know, this is, this is our time. So, even though I've been professionally in the work for 45 years, you've been in this work for just as long because every single one of us are given opportunities every day to, to utilize all the aspects of our being to think and to be abstract in our multi-dimensional aspects and really connect them. So I teach self-love um, and I do that because my journey has been one where I have recognized the utter essential journey that each of us is on in coming to a place of loving ourselves so that we can live as we are meant to live and deserve, which is happy and healthy and total. So that's me. Absolutely. That's beautiful. I love that. Happy, healthy, and whole. 
that is the goal. Yes. <laughs> it shouldn't have to be a goal because it's what we already are. But coming into these physical bodies, we kind of get sidetracked. <laughs> yeah. so we lose our way. So, and we also have Rebecca Smith McGovern, a great friend who I met a few years ago at a professional at a professional retreat. And we have been connected ever since. So Rebecca, tell us about you. Well, you know, um, I came up through years of, you know, I, I had started out being um, a very focused child um, with very distinct ideas um, of how I saw the world. And, and I didn't I remember asking my dad one day, you know, is that real? It, it doesn't look real. I, I had this question. And, you know, now he, he went after that because he thought my kid's losing her marbles. Um, but it, it stayed with me. It stayed with me. And as I, as I came up through high school and into my 20s, um, you know, I was very outwardly focused. I had become very outwardly focused and um, was, was really, you know, looking at, you know, who, who I was supposed to be in the world um, and, you know, focused on college and focused on those kinds of things. And I began getting ill. And um, by the time I was 20, I found myself sitting in a doctor's office, you know, with a, a five-year lifespan, according, according to them. And, you know, at the time, I, you know, it, it made me very angry because I felt that th it was not another person's place to determine what my destiny was. And I knew inside that there was a different answer for me. The thing is, is that I was so externally for, uh, focused um, that I was looking for all of the answers outside of myself. I didn't want to accept their answers, but at the same time, I wasn't, I wasn't connected inside of myself. And it took me, it took me several years to make that connection because it, 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 it actually required, and this is how, you know, so often when we're in an illness, it's, it's it, first of all, it scares the snot out of you because your life is on the line. Your we're life is people. on the line, right? And so the, the compulsion is to go with what, you know, you're told outside with somebody who supposedly has authority or, or has these ideas of how things are supposed to go, right? Or has the answers. And we're, we're conditioned to not trust ourselves. And, and so I kept looking <clears throat> through conventional ways for, for another answer. You know, my background was in science. So I did I, I did psychobiology, psychoneuroimmunology, uh, blah, 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 blah. I could go on there, but I, you know, I don't need to. Um, it, I was looking for all of these, these external ways. And as, as everything kept cascading, you know, from one problem to another, I knew, I knew that there was no way that I had autoimmune liver disease. I had rheumatoid arthritis. I had lupus. I had pleurisy. I had vasculitis. I had, car, you know, uh, uh, pericarditis, you know, you know, when you, when you begin to chase from one body system to another and everything is all there, I'm like, I'm missing a big piece. And it finally it finally hit me like a baseball bat. So it really, um, my illnesses were totally serving me. Absolutely. Completely serving, completely <coughs> serving. And, <laughs> you know, I, it, I'm grateful. I am absolutely grateful because my healing came through my connection through myself to God. 
that's how my healing came to be. And it is the cultivation of that relationship and standing in my truth and in my being that has allowed me to come forward and, you know, not die. I mean, yeah, I'm still here and I don't have a liver transplant and I don't have RA and, uh, you know, <laughs> you know, I don't have those, <clears throat> I don't have those manifestations. So um, I, I, I think my main message, you know, to, to, to all who are dealing with these things that are, they're frightening, um, they, they, they throw, it throws you off balance. And it can be the greatest challenge of your life to trust yourself, to come inside and to trust yourself, to trust God, to trust that relationship and to come from that point. Um, but yet that's exactly what we're, we're, where we're asked to go. Absolutely. And it, and, and there's our, and, and that has been my answer and my pathway. Yeah. Beautiful. I love that. I love that you say that all of those things were serving you. Yeah. Because that's exactly what I discovered as well. And there's an entire branch of science that, that proves that our bodies are here, are serving us, that every single biological symptom that shows up is serving us. Mm -hmm. It is there to help us. It's there to protect us. But all these symptoms have been villainized and yeah. capitalized upon. And they, they cause fear for now. What, you and I have gone through this in, with physical things and we realize that our bodies are literally here serving us. So there is literally nothing that we should fear about our bodies. And it's the, it's the going within and connecting yeah. and recognizing that there is nothing to fear, that mm -hmm. our bodies are serving us 24 seven. Mm -hmm. And when we take the fear out of the equation, we can start to see clearly. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, I love how you say that because one of the things that has come up really for me is just the word curious, mm -hmm. the word curious. And when, when something comes up for me, like right now, um, I developed a cough about three months ago. <laughs> and, and so I, I, I was like, Hmm, what's that about? So it's, it's curiosity over, you know, what we experience and then going inside of that mm -hmm. diving into it because it transforms when we go into it. It's like diving into a pool, you know, you dive into that pool and whew, there's a whole other world in there. It's the same world, but it looks completely different. So anyway, <laughs> just, just my thoughts. Exactly. You know, and our bodies have, our bodies speak a specific language. Mm -hmm. So like every single person who, who develops the same type of cough that you have has had the same type of, of fright of, or conflict going on. Mm -hmm. Every person with a liver issue has had the same type of conflict happening. Every, every woman with, with uterine cancer has had the same type of conflict in their life. So when we start to understand the body's language, we can go, oh, what's that about? Okay, well, that is oh, there was, there was a death fright in, you know, there's a death fright going through the collective. A lot of people are, are worried about dying, you know, yeah. and when we worry about someone who is dying, then, or when we think that we're going to die, our bodies create extra cells and they create extra cells for a reason, because if we're going to be attacked by a saber toothed tiger, we're going to need extra oxygen available. So this, there's a template, there's a reason why mm -hmm. our bodies respond to our specific, you know, red flag warnings and the body goes, oh, what type of red flag warning is that? And it goes, oh, all right, well, let me help you. <laughs> so all we need to do is understand kind of the red flag warning system. And every time we go into these thought patterns of, I'm not okay, this isn't good. What am I gonna do? Why did they do that to me? 
you know, every type of red flag warning that we have triggers a specific response from the body. All we have to do is understand that system, how it's set up. And we understand that the majority of the, of the symptoms when they arise, it's actually our body healing itself. You know, like we've taken the red flag down and go, phew, okay, now we're good. So now every, whatever the body was doing during the red flag warning time, now it needs to undo whatever it was doing to try to support us through the red flag warning time. Mm -hmm. And once we take that flag down, we're like, oh, we're all good. Back to good now. <laughs> the body simply rebalances itself. And that process is painful. You know, it can be coughing. It can be congestion. It can be fevers. It can be vomiting, diarrhea, you know, whatever, whatever the body needs to do to reverse whatever it was to doing, whatever it was doing to support us. Yeah. And just, you know, oh. when we start to understand, mm -hmm. it takes all the fear out of the stuff. Yeah. It's like, oh, I'm coughing. Oh, yay. Thank you, lungs. I'm healing. This is awesome. Sweet. <laughs> like, totally different mindset. Yeah. So I just want to jump in because I want to make certain that people understand that um, <clears throat> something that you had said, Lisa, about, you know, um, how can I phrase it? You know, the body always responds this way right, that there are these um, direct associations with traumas or whatever. And I want people to know that that's yes and no. So it is a generalization, okay? And in terms of the blueprint that it gives us, particularly as um, healers and individuals, right? It gives us a blueprint about an area to go into. However, what I also want everyone to know is that you are unique in how you express mm -hmm. your discord, all right? So what is true for some may not be true for others, meaning the path back to healing. So we have to take into consideration you, your personal history and, and where you deviated from the connection to your true self, that connection that Rebecca was talking about with the God within you. That deviation is what set that whole um, succession. It's like a domino effect, exactly. okay? And then you have symptoms, but we know this to be true because, you know, particularly, I guess, with my experience um, working both in conventional medicine and in metaphysical medicine, that um, we can give a treatment, right, to somebody who has, let's say, lung cancer, okay, and it's, there is no effect whatsoever. And yet there are others who will respond immediately. Mm -hmm. So there is something more to it. And what happens when we go into the journey of healing, it is absolutely mandatory that this is a personal journey. We, can, you know, what I always say is, and this comes from being the mother of three goalies on various sports teams, <laughs> but before that, that ball or whatever it is comes into that net, it has gone through all of your defense mechanisms. Every single offense player, <laughs> defense player, and here it is in front of that goal and you're left with, holy crap, what am I supposed to do? And you find yourself, you know, scurrying, trying to defend this goal. And that's what happens when we have physical um, symptoms. So we have to we have to take each one individually and say, all right, where where did that break through? Where is that deviation? And when we do that, um, we now have access to all of this information because yes, we have access to the blueprint where we can say, okay, these symptoms are most commonly caused by this, 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 and this. 
And then we can say, okay, now what's your part in that? Where, where were you? Where are you in all of this? And you know, it's so interesting, you know, we're talking about this journey of healing and we all like Rebecca, you had a health crisis, right? Lisa, you had a health crisis. Um, it's so interesting because last night I went to see um, Roadrunner and it's a movie about Anthony Bourdain Oh. And it's a, it's a documentary. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of him being interviewed, but you, you, you hear from his friends, you know, his family, et cetera, et cetera. And the pain that they, that they shared about this man's life who could never connect with himself. And I'm telling you, the film is so moving. It's so moving but you see the deterioration that takes place because that internal relationship with self was never achieved. It was always, and I think Rebecca, you might've said this, it was on the outside, right? Looking to the outside always for, um, for, for that happiness, um, to feel connected and whole and I think that, you know, in talking about our healings that we're all looking for, and again, Lisa, like you said from the very beginning, you know, whether it's physical, mental, emotional, it doesn't make any difference. It all is the same source. The same source is disconnect from us as source, yeah. right? It's the disconnect to that relationship. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, it's just remarkable how it shows itself in our lives. Yeah, you know, I love that you say that, that disconnect from source. I mean, because we are body, mind, and soul. Soul is the source. Soul is connected to source. Soul is one and the same with source. Mm -hmm. And with the, when the mind disconnects from source, when the mind is thinking thoughts, that are not in alignment with source, that's where we disconnect, then the body will counterbalance because all three parts, it's three parts of one whole, right? So when the, when the mind and the soul are in perfect alignment, health is the only option, like that's well-being is it. But when the mind and the soul disconnect, the body then, points directly at the source of the disconnect. So whether it's, you know, you're thinking thoughts of, you know, that you're going to die. Well, there is no death. Like ultimately we're just, we are the soul. So there is no death. So you are looking at an illusion, like, you know, the body will point to that. So it's really interesting when we understand that blueprint and the, the interconnection between all three pieces then we can use the body as the as the barometer, you know, to or you know the compass to point us directly at. All right, what thoughts am I thinking that are disconnected? Where is the problem? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is where the the medical model doesn't take into consideration the the mind or the soul. Like they don't look at you as a whole being. They're simply looking at the body and going, bro, oh, bro, something's wrong with your body. Yeah. But they're not looking at where the disconnect is because the disconnect is the actual problem. Mm -hmm. Body is never the problem. It's the right. disconnect that's the yeah. problem. You know, um, I, I, I'd love to connect back into something that Marcy said, um, which really marries with what you're saying right now, which is this aspect that um, and it's not an aspect, it is the truth and that we are all unique, right? So we are all unique. And yet the medical model is set up. And, and this is this is not a, a judgment call or anything like that. It just shows us where our position needs to be when we are looking at any options for how we are approaching what we consider treatment or what we consider how we handle our body, because it is unique. Our position in this world, uh, you know, who we are and how we reflect and how we respond to different stimuli, it, you know, everything is a unique perspective and, and the way that we uh, uh, 
express, okay, the way that we physically express uh, through illness or, or what have you, or disarray. And then we have the aspect of disconnect. And yet the medical model is designed for a cookie cutter pattern. And one of the ways that sometimes I say I survived the medical system, but in truth, in truth, um, you know, th there were, there were aspects of that, that definitely worked for me. However, it was learning to navigate that path and reflect upon what was in alignment and what was not right. because, and, and honestly, it was by the grace of God that I found, um, a, a, a physician in my, I, I might've been 30 or 31, 30, somewhere in there <clears throat> when I found someone that I'm still with today, who is highly intuitive. Mm -hmm. And um, although I, I don't express with any of the super, you know, big problems that I ever, ever had, um, you know, we all agree that I am abnormally normal. And that's fine. And I like it. Anyway, but this is where this is where we get to discern, we get to discern. And, and I'll never forget, I had a, a Kundalini yoga instructor who I just adored. And she, I, I was fussing with her one day about, I can't eat that and I can't do that and blah, 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 blah. You know, I, I don't know, maybe it was 23 or 24 at the time. And she said, you're learning your path. Every single thing that you do is helping you to define and discern your path. And it is the truth. So when, when something shows itself to you and you don't feel good when you eat it, thank it. Thank you for showing me my path. I mean, it's as simple as that in, in some respects. It really truly is. Everything is serving you. And gratitude is a huge, huge piece inside of the healing, inside of healing. It's a huge, huge piece. Being grateful for everything that you were shown that allows you to step into a pathway. And then when you know your pathway, poof, wow, talk about freedom. Talk about freedom. Absolutely. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, everything, everything is serving us. Every single thing that shows up in our lives is coming from our own energy field, from our own thought patterns, from you know, there's nothing that's outside of us. Mm -hmm. And you know, when we start to learn that, hey, this is, all of this is my own creation. You know, my life circumstances are my creation. And if I have circumstances that aren't to my liking, I've been creating unconsciously. I've been creating from the disconnect rather than from the connect. Let's mm -hmm. see how I can connect back in. And that's that path back to that wholeness and alignment. Mm -hmm. I love that. So we've got folks on this morning. We've got um, we've got Shannon and Delbert and Kathy. Kathy says hello to everyone. And my husband is trying to heal some eye issues, but lessened eyesight is scary. Looking at this as a healing re reaction is hard, even though I get it. Yeah, it is. And you know, sometimes, you know. The, it's not necessarily there are two parts to the healing phase there's the the part where the body is responding and making changes and then there's the part where it is actually reversing that and healing so when we're in this conflict active stage you know this can be um you know that lessened eyesight is is not all it's it's not always just the straight path to healing you know, we have to be able to discern where the, where the lessened eyesight is coming from. I'm going through the same thing. My eyesight has been getting more, more blurry lately. So, you know, it's like, where is this coming from? So it's a process of trying to, mm -hmm. to get that part figured out. And there are many, many different paths to the healing of that. Right. So, yeah. You know, it's, that's the, that's a little journey. Like which path is it that's going to work for me? For me, exactly. And that's yeah. so key. And so what I think, and this goes back, I think Rebecca, you were talking about, um, um, 
you know, staying curious. So when something happens, even if you just start your own healing journey with asking the question, what do you need from me? Hmm. What do you need from me? That is stepping into that place of being curious, which is so powerful. Yeah. Number one. Number two, it's, it is stepping into alignment with relationship. You know, we, we sometimes look at our lives in terms of relationship with everything outside of us, people, you know, this relationship, that relationship. The most essential relationship is that which is with yourself. And it's the relationship with your higher self. So it's the relationship with your higher self um, coming into your conscious mind. And when you ask something so simple as, what do you need from me? You are acknowledging that these two parts of you, which are actually one and the same, but they're two parts of you are at work. That is called a relationship. And you are strengthening that relationship with such a simple question. What do you need from me? And then whatever that answer is, you begin your journey, even if it's the smallest little baby step, because sometimes there's information that comes forward that is incredulous. We can't wrap our heads around it, let alone our hearts around it. Mm -hmm. And I know I experienced that myself um, a number of years ago when it was coming into my conscious mind that I, I needed to leave my marriage. And I came from a mindset where that wasn't an option. You didn't do that. You didn't leave your marriage and you certainly didn't, you know, deconstruct your family and, and all of this. And given the circumstances of, you know, really being very visible in the community and, and all of this, I struggled. I struggled with um, the answers that I was getting, you know, <laughs> and it was like, oh, oh. and, you know, just the thought of it brought me to my knees. How can I do that? How can I, how can I do that? Disappoint so many people, disappoint my family, disappoint my parents, disappoint everything that I've worked so hard to build. And yet the message was the same over and over and over again. And until I could align with that message, I took baby steps. And if, you know, I took too big of a step and I had to step back a little bit more, it was okay. I gave myself permission to do that. And this is where, when you recognize that you're in this really important journey and you can feel, okay, if this is an enormity by your reaction, you need help. You know, this is where the eyes and the guidance of others come in who have gone through, yeah. you know, experiences where they've had to, they've had to take these steps also. And this is why we're here together. None of us are meant to go through this stuff by ourselves. Mm -hmm. And yet it's so, you know, it seems like this paradox of the fact that the work is within ourselves, but sometimes because we're so you know, bombarded with all of this um, information and conflicting, you know, conversations, we need the guidance of someone who has clarity. And I know that that's what brought me to where I am today. Mm -hmm. But I also know that it was a matter of me accepting me, accepting this love for myself, that no matter how long it took, no matter what it required of me, um, I was doing it. And the courage that I cultivated during that time, the commitment to myself and to my God within me was cultivated in a way I couldn't have even imagined. And also how I gave permission to all those and all of my other relationships to do the same. And um, this, this is, no matter how small, 
this um, messages that we get when we ask that question, what do you need from me or how big, just know that this is individualized for you because it's your path and it's also, and I think Rebecca, you had said this earlier too, it's also very often the path to your mission, to your expression of the God within you. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be, you know, being on a, a global stage. It's mm -hmm. just, oh, what are you meant to glean from this? And then what are you meant to share? We are here to share everything. So. Absolutely. We are here to help each other. When we all work together, we all have what we need. We can live a beautiful, amazing heaven on earth. You know, this is the design. And, you know, just like when all the cells of our body, you know, when our body, mind, and soul are all in alignment, working together, life just flows. It's easy. It's good. You know? <laughs> but when we are in that space of disconnect, it's a little rough. <laughs> Yeah. And, you know, when we, if we just look at, at humanity and the earth as a whole, as, as one whole unit, you know, while we're in this space of disconnect and separation, there's a lot of dis-ease on this planet. Mm -hmm. But when we start to come back together and start to uh, love and honor and respect each other and stop trying to force each other into doing certain things and this and that and the other things like mm -hmm. we can all just start working together mm -hmm. as one healthy happy humanity and work with the earth and we can literally start creating heaven on earth mm -hmm. and i love what you said marcy about the the two parts of of you there's the the human part that's dealing with the external world. And then there's that higher self, that soul that is always, always stable, always solid, always connected to source. And you know, that's why I created my website as connecting you to you. It's like, let's bring the two parts back together for ultimate well-being. Mm -hmm. You know, Marcy mentioned something else too that um, where, um, see, uh, let me go back to that, um, where the, this, the, the aspect, you know, when you're sharing about, you know, the difficulty in making those decisions, right? That, you know, it was really, really hard to, to make, uh, you know, these decisions of, you know, how can I do this to this person or what have you? And Yet at the same time, it, you know, what I heard you say was uh, how it served the other person. And so often, and, and this, and, and, and what you just said, uh, Lisa, about um, uh, how, we, how we're focusing, again, this is like the external force of, well, we want people to do this, or we want people to do that relative to ourselves we think we think that what we tell someone else to do is going to affect our position and yet everything everything that affects here begins here so um when marcy was sharing about you know leaving her marriage that served everyone around her and we worry about, we worry about how others are going to be affected. And, and yet in, when we make a choice that is aligned in truth with, 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 which, you know, when it is aligned in who we are, that serves humanity. That serves humanity. It, everything begins from this point and then poof, fans out. So it's what we choose to do. We don't need to worry about what George next door is doing in his backyard. I mean, if he's starting a fire and it's going to burn down the neighborhood, okay, let's call the fire department and get that taken care of. But, you know, um, 
in truth, we have the power to change the world right here. Bravo. Yeah. And I loved your, your, uh, your power video that you did a couple, couple days ago, Lisa, uh, about um, giving away our power. Mm -hmm. It was really good. So that power aspect, you know, of, oh, well, the power is within. The power to change the world is within you. Absolutely. You know, when we think about the, the creation of a soul, all souls are created equal. Like there is no better soul than another. <laughs> you know, it, it's not how it works. Right. So, and <clears throat> everything that we are intrinsically created with we have all the power we have the power to create and when we're here and we're we're giving away our power we're letting other people tell us who we should be and what we should do and where we should go and how we should think we just simply give all away give away all of our power when i was in the process of facing cancer i was terrified yeah. And like, I realized after a while, when I was like, Marcy was saying, I was asking the questions. My question was, what do I need to know about this? Like, what do I need to know to change this? And suddenly the answer showed up and it was like, there is no enemy. There is no cancer. Nothing is attacking you. Your body is supporting you. There is no such thing as cancer or disease because there's nothing from the outside that is penetrating. It's all coming from the inside. And I realized I had just been feeding all of my power into via my fear into this cancer thing, making it a gigantic enemy and a really, really, really big problem when it was my energy was generating the entire problem that fear was generating the problem. So when, as soon as I stopped feeding the fear, the fear went away, the problem went away. <laughs> it was so simple. Yeah, <clears throat> I have to jump in because you made such a powerful and important point. And I want to use my story as an example. So when I was, <clears throat> you know, um, struggling with this whole concept of leaving my marriage, I know that a big part of it was, <clears throat> who will I be? Mm. Who will I be if I leave this marriage? <clears throat> I knew who I was in it, right? But who will I be when I'm out of it? And that was so much of my struggle. And one day, you know, I realized that if that was what my struggle was, I had to give up the notion that I needed to be defined. And when I gave up the need to be defined as anything and just said, let's, you know, quite frankly, I said, um, I'm here to be in service. You tell me. And this comes from A Course in Miracles. Um, there's a little verse and it goes, um, where should I go? What should I do? Who should I speak to? And what should I say? And it's a wonderful way for us to start every day or even every moment of inquiry. But when I gave up this notion that I needed to be defined in some way and I was open to just allowing myself to follow my path wherever I was to be of service, um, everything fell into motion. You know, everything just fell step by step by step. And one day, um, this was after I had left my marriage, my marital home, um, a lot of, you know, friends, family, um, my job, my community, all of it. And trust me, I mean, this was no easy feat. It had defined me for nearly 30 years. Mm -hmm. So one day I'm sitting at my desk and living where clearly the universe was laying itself at my feet. Everything was just, you know, flooding through me. 
I suddenly realized that all of these medical conditions that I had been experiencing while I was married and just brushed off as part of my aging process were gone. <laughs> and I'm not kidding. These are things like I couldn't get up out of a chair without having the table to hold me. I would cry at night because of the pain in my hips. I had digestive problems where I never left my house ever without, you know, Tums. I had constant headaches. And I used to have these recurrent nightmares that would wake me out of a deep sleep and I'd be in a sweat and they always had the same theme. I couldn't find my wedding ring. And I would tear everything apart, the covers, my drawers, whatever it was. And this day that, that was like maybe six months after I had left. And all of a sudden I realized I could do cartwheels on the front lawn. <laughs> it was gone. You're talking spontaneous healing. Absolutely. Now, my attention was not on healing that. My right. attention was on healing this, yeah. my alignment with my heart. I started to look at things not from how will this be seen on the outside, right, by anyone else. I just kept narrowing down my world to the point where I started to measure things. Is this in service to my spirit? Is this in service to expand me as a soul? Is this in service to source within me? That was it. And when I did that, I experienced expansion in a way that I could have never imagined. And it's what brought me here today. Mm -hmm. That is beautiful. Beautiful. I love that, Marcy. Thank you for sharing that. Yes. It is. And we are the universe. Y O U, universe. We right. are that. And everything comes from within. Ultimately, at the core of it all, there is just the one I am. And we are each an aspect of that one I am. Yes. So when we serve ourselves, not in a selfish way, but in a self full way we are in service to ourselves and we are in service to others my teacher jim self always says it's 100 percent service to self and 100 and 100 percent service to others right mm. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah oh i yeah. just wanted to say lisa i you know to connect with that selfishness that so often people get hung up on. Mm -hmm. I always say, shift that from selfish, whatever you think is selfish into self wish. <laughs> Just shift it. I like that. Selfish to self wish. Yeah. Yeah. I love I really that. Like that. <laughs> so we have Kinsey on. Good morning, Kinsey. Patrick Lombardi is asking if you are connected to source and there are times, are there times when medical intervention is necessary? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. If um, your appendix bursts, you definitely want to have some medical correct. intervention like absolutely. right then. <laughs> Um, I, I think I think one of the one of the common things that comes up is that that we think that um, we don't we don't choose or we don't um, source solutions that don't involve others. In other words, we think that, oh, well, if, if I'm relying on source, then it, then, then that means that I don't reach out to anyone else, but that's, that's not true. That, that definitely is not true. I wouldn't be here without both aspects and it's not even both aspects. That's one aspect. That's using, not using source, but it's it's through my connection to source. I was able to discern what treatment is actually 
needed and what is not serving me. Now, ultimately, none of everything that I did uh, became supportive to get me through certain points in my life. In other words, it kept me alive while I was still, you know, in this, in, in this, in this, in this journey. And yet my own healing on a permanent basis came directly through source. But it doesn't mean that I did not rely upon my resources that were available that I knew that were in my truth. So if that makes sense. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So I hope that that helps Patrick a little bit because um, sometimes, you know, sometimes we, we may feel at the mercy of the medical system that, that this is the only answer and we've got to do what they say. And, um, and, and there is that sort of, uh, you know, I have faced, I have faced, uh, I have faced some physicians that, that, um, did not like the fact that I wanted to choose and I wound up leaving those offices. Okay. Um, but those choices that, that served me and it led me to the right people. It led me to the right people. So, yeah. So, I mean, that was beautiful. And, you know, I think it's so important that we emphasize number one, if you believe that all things are of God, okay, mm -hmm. all things are an extension of source energy. It is creative life force energy extended and manifested in many different ways. When we start to, when we find ourselves, for instance, in a health crisis, or we have a part that needs to be replaced, right? Just like a car would, you know, you wouldn't just keep ignoring that. You would go to a mechanic and get that part repl replaced. But the point being is that we have become a society that has relied on that alone. And the important piece here that I hope everyone is really gleaning from this conversation is that let's say you do have surgery to repair this, replace that, um, fix this. It's not where you're meant to stay. Yeah. You're meant to glean the spiritual aspect of that, even if it's in the healing process alone. Yeah. There is something there for you that is there to feed your heart, mm -hmm. your heart connection to source. Mm -hmm. And this, when we can start to look through those eyes and understand everything that we are experiencing is simply an opportunity for us to remember to come back to our heart, to the true nature of our being, to reinforce our relationship with source, then you don't have to have fear about, oh, you know, what are they going to think of me if I have surgery? right? Use that surgery for your spiritual experience. Use everything in your life to ask, how can I strengthen my connection to source through this? It's not about ignoring the incredible strides that the medical community has made or, you know, science itself, but we're meant to work together. Mm -hmm. We're meant to work together because we both learn and teach simultaneously, right? Yes. But there is, and make no mistake about this, there is one source for all of that. Mm -hmm. And that's the relationship that we must come back to over and over and over again, regardless of what we are experiencing or how you want to deal with it. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, that was really well said, Marcy. I love that. Yeah, that was beautiful. You know, and I'll add my my take to Patrick's question. Um, is also there there does come a point um, 
where we start to realize that everything is source energy right. and we are each taking source energy and molding it into the shape of our lives and that when when we're operating from disconnect we get some some pretty lumpy shapes a lot of times <laughs> but when we're operating in full alignment we can literally from that full alignment our bodies do stay in full alignment yes. and then when we are able to manage our energy our source energy in such a way as to remain in alignment we really truly don't need the medical model because we're not out of alignment. Right. So it's, it's the matter of learning how to manage our own personal energy so that we stay in alignment. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, then we really don't need medical intervention anymore because we understand how our bodies work. We understand if the body goes out of alignment, we know why it's out of alignment and we understand how to bring it back into alignment energetically. So, mm -hmm. you know, there is also that. But it doesn't mean that you're less than if you can't oh. make that jump. Of right. Right. We I'm are thinking. Thinking. it's all right. All it is time. all a process. It's a right. process. And so don't feel like you're less than or that there's something wrong with you um, because you're not able to do that. This is like everything else in life, it's, it's a journey. And it's a journey where we learn to trust ourselves, trust our relationship with source, trust, as Lisa said, everything is source energy and it follows the same rules, okay? Because it's consistent. And when, and how we can learn more about that is to experience when we're out of it. So don't begrudge yourself. <laughs> you know, accept where you are and use it as that starting point right here and right now to say, what if? What if? You know, stay in that place where you can say, oh, well, what if it doesn't have to be this way? Mm. And then, you know, just um, go through and, and really start to cultivate this ability to discern and I think that this is probably one of the most powerful gifts that we've been given. And that is our ability to discern energy. This is something I work very closely with my clients on because once we learn how to discern energy, no matter what someone is telling you, no matter what the books are defining for you, no matter what seems to be black and white, you will know is this for my highest good or is it not? And so, yeah, that's, it's, it's, a, it's an invitation to start to live life. I think the way, you know, that we're meant to. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, as, as humans, we've never been taught how to manage energy. We've never been taught how to see energy, how to notice energy and everything is energy and when we start to be able to notice that then we get back in that driver's seat because we can we can transmute energy very simply very easily but it's just it's a it's a little learning curve it's a little learning process so beautiful a lifelong process absolutely <laughs> it is, it is. For that, sure. that's the fun part that's the fun part actually it is yeah. Yeah, like, it's like, oh, wait, what's going on here? Something new. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so true. Oh, we love that. Then we have Christina on this morning and Michelle. And Patrick says, thank you. Kathy says, I started with the Course in Miracles in the 80s. My first intro to all of this. Yippee. Yes, and discerning where it, and she also says, discerning where it is healing or reverting is the question. Absolutely, all the time. It's, you know, which direction are we going? So it's, it is a self, self inquiry all the time. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. So, ladies, this has been an amazing conversation this morning. Yes. Thank you so much. So, I hope that, that people, are starting to really see that 
we are the creators of our realities, of our life experiences, and that our bodies are simply responding and trying to help us every single time. There's never anything wrong with the body. It's like the body, mind, and soul, all three pieces are interconnected. When one changes, the others respond as well. <laughs> you know? So we have to start to be able to look at our bodies from a different perspective instead of seeing that they're broken or that they're being attacked by something outside. Everything comes from within and our bodies are always in our court. They're always responding and protecting us, helping us. So when we start to see that, we take our power back. And then we can start to be grateful to these beautiful bodies for supporting us through all of our misperceptions and all of our fears, our doubts, our worries. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Yes. So, so Rebecca, if people want to reach out to you, where can they get in touch with you? Well, you can find me on Facebook. I have a Facebook page called Awakening Serafina and a website that is the same, which is www.awakeningserafina.com. Serafina has a PH. Beautiful. Thank you. So, yes. Thank you so much for being here today. And Marcy, how can people reach out to you? Um, so I have two websites. One is um, heartshiftcoach.com and the other is selfloveuniversity.com. And it's filled with all kinds of wonderful information about self-love and how I can support you in that um, with digital programs and so forth. Um, here on Facebook, I have the High Vibe Tribe, which I invite you to join us, and also a new group that I've just started called Self Love and Heart Shifts. And it's where I'm teaching about self love and how it um, provides the energy for us to recalibrate the energy of our heart, which is the heart shift. So I invite you to join me um, there and join everyone, of course, all of like hearts and minds and to encourage you to find your path that will take you to really starting to live from your heart um, rather than just your head, which very often leads you in the wrong direction. So. <laughs> Absolutely. The head and the mind have their own little agendas <laughs> and the heart and the soul are one. So <laughs> yeah. beautiful. We love that. Well, thank you everyone. And, and Rebecca and um, Marcy, if you want to place your um, links in the chat for people after the show, that would be great. So they can connect. You're welcome to do that. So thank you all so much for joining us this morning for another episode of Soul Lucian Sunday because the soul is the solution. Everything comes from within. So I am Lisa Warner. I am the author of The Simplicity of Self-Healing. And my website is connectingyoutoyou.com, spelled out in full. So if any of us can help you on your self-healing journey, please feel free to reach out to any one of us. We work together, we work individually, and we work with you to connect you back to you. So thank you so much. Until next week, create heaven on earth for yourself. <laughs> Enjoy your week. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye thank for you. now.